Unfortunately, there's a lot of people that still dismiss nutrition having anything to do with cancer. And we actually know that 30% of cancers, um, excuse me, 30% of cancer deaths are actually related to poor nutrition. And that's a huge percentage and which is actually more than smoking. Are you ready to live the life you deserve? Do you want to feel vibrantly healthy and reach your optimal weight without dieting while being kind to animals and the planet? Then you're you're in the right place at the right time. Get ready to hear from doctors, nutritionists, experts, and everyday men and women committed to creating a powerful life in mind, body, and soul through ethical food choices. Welcome to Plant-Based Eating for Health with your host, certified plant-based nutritionist, Kathleen Gage. Well, hello everybody. This is Kathleen Gage with Plant-Based Eating for Health, and I am thrilled today to have a woman who has made it her life's work to really educate and uh, feed people all around plant-based lifestyle, plant-based eating, plant-based diets. And Allison Tierney is a registered dietitian. She's board certified in oncology nutrition. Her passion for preventing, managing, and reversing chronic diseases with nutrition and healthy lifestyle led her to create Wholesome LLC in 2015, and we're definitely going to talk about that. She focuses on nutrition recommendations strongly rooted in scientific evidence to help others take their health into their own hands, especially for patients who encounter a cancer diagnosis. When not working with clients, you can find her in her pool, you can find her exercising, spending time with her husband and daughter, or developing a new plant-based recipe in her kitchen. And, uh, you know, actually, she just went for a swim, so I love it because she's physical, she's active, and Allison, great to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. It's a true pleasure to be here. Thanks. And well, tell us a little bit about your background, how you got involved in plant-based eating, and, and you actually turned it into a business. Yeah, well, it kind of dates back quite a bit because I actually have a business degree. That's what I went to college for first. So I have a business leadership and management major. And while I was in school, I was an athlete. I played softball in college. And that's where nutrition started for me was like a passion about how could I fuel my performance with nutrition. That's where it all started. But then when I was in college and I was a freshman and my mom was diagnosed with breast cancer, when I was a senior, my grandfather was diagnosed with liver cancer, my grandmother was diagnosed with lung cancer, or excuse me, breast cancer, and the other grandmother passed away from lung cancer before I was born, and my godmother was diagnosed with breast cancer. Mm. So there was a lot of these diagnoses that were coming in the family, and that's where it started to switch a little bit for me, where I was like, how can nutrition play a role in helping to prevent cancer in the first place? How could it help them during the course of treatment? And then even into survivorship, how might it help them? So that's where it all started. But again, I was still in school uh, to, for a business major. Then when I graduated, I ended up deciding to go back to school um, to get a second bachelor's degree in nutrition. And it was actually my now husband, then boyfriend, who was the biggest advocate for me to go back to school because he's like, you love nutrition. Like that's all you're reading about. That's all you're, you know, teaching other people. You should really try it. And when I was 21, graduated from college, I thought, oh, it's too late, right? I can, I can laugh about that now. Uh, But then, so when I decided to go back to school, I told all my professors that I wanted to be an oncology dietitian. That is exactly what I wanted to do. And the reason I did that is because there's not a lot of experience in oncology nutrition that you can get through school. So I wanted every opportunity that I could. And thankfully, they accommodated it as best they could. And I had an internship experience at a well-known national cancer center and then um, got hired there as an outpatient oncology dietitian. And then that's when things started turning for me a little bit with the plant-based nutrition was when I was really diving into my full-time job as an oncology dietitian because I just strongly believe in doing the best for my patients as much as possible. And I was the person and still am the person that comes home and reads all the nutrition books and reads the research and just dives into it all. And it's kind of a joke between my husband and I because he's a pharmacist and he goes, you know, I really do enjoy pharmacy, but I don't just come home and just read all the books and articles about it. (laughs) So definitely a nutrition nerd from that standpoint. But it was during that time that I pretty much stumbled across plant-based nutrition. 
I grew up um, eating what you would consider, most would consider a healthy diet that fruits, some veggies, chicken, um, low fat dairy, very little red meat, et cetera. So it was, we didn't do a lot of fast food or processed food or anything like that. So pretty healthy for the most part. Um, but as I was diving into more of this research, especially as it relates to cancer, I thought, man, I should really start practicing this on my own and just see what other people are experiencing, what they're talking about. So I started to do it myself. And I started out really slowly. I just decided one month I was just going to get rid of meat and just see what happens. And as it turns out, I never turned back. I never ate meat again. And I live in Wisconsin, so it is the dairy state. So cheese definitely, which is for a lot of people, um, is very difficult to get rid of. And I would agree for me, that was the hardest thing to kick. But I slowly started working it out of my diet. Instead of having a glass of milk at dinner time, which was very normal, um, I stopped doing that, started reducing the cheese overall. But then as it came forward, as I was doing this a little bit more and then practicing it with my patients, at the same time, my husband and I were dealing with infertility. Mm. And um, so I was doing a lot of research in oncology nutrition, but it, my nut I wanted to have some more interest in what about fertility nutrition? How could this maybe benefit me and my husband to try to conceive? And so I did my research, made sure it was healthy and pregnancy and all that great stuff. And I, as my husband and I were about to dive into more fertility treatment, I just said to my husband, you know what? I want to try being 100% plant-based because remember, I had been reducing it from my mm -hmm. diet, but I wasn't completely whole food plant-based by any means. Um, I want to try it 100% and see what happens. And of course, he said, absolutely. If you think it'll help, let's do it. And so I am so grateful that I get to say that three weeks after adopting a plant-based diet exclusively, I got pregnant and ovulated for the first time in like a year and a half um, because I have something called PCOS or polycystic ovarian syndrome. And um, so it's kind of even my doctor couldn't believe it. Wait, what? <laughs> and um, we had an extremely healthy pregnancy. We have a beautiful baby girl who is now um, three and a half, so not so much a baby anymore. Um, and we raise her plant-based. But after all these things that happened, you know, for me personally, but as the changes that I was seeing for my oncology patients as well, I couldn't not stand on the rooftop and scream right. aloud how amazing this was. And so I started working, as I was working in the cancer center, I was practicing these things, but I just found that I wasn't able to practice the, the way that I wanted to in the cancer center. And I wasn't able to reach as many people as I wanted to. So that's how I stepped into wholesome LLC and, um, you know, thankfully get to work with people all over the country promoting a plant-based diet for cancer and chronic disease. So that's kind of the long story, somewhat short. <laughs> well, I love it. And and there's a few questions I have. PPOC, is that the same as endometriosis? Uh, so it's PCOS, so PCOS. polycystic ovarian syndrome. It is not the same thing as okay. endometriosis. However, both do cause infertility very commonly. Right. Well, um, well I so was diagnosed at the age of 21. I'm 66 now. And so Sure. This was back in the day, they didn't even have a name for it uh, initially, yeah. and it was just at the beginning stages. Mm -hmm. And it, it's interesting because my mother-in-law had really bad uh, stomach cramps and like I couldn't even get out of bed. And she said, do you think it's the cheese you're eating? I was married to a Hispanic man and a lot of cheese in our, our diet. Yeah. And I thought, why would the cheese do that to me? And now looking back, I have to wonder how much that contributed to it. And yeah. you know, when, when you talk about the, the work you do with people diagnosed with cancer um, conditions, I actually, what really finally took me over the edge with going plant-based, um, I, I had precancerous uh, 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 colon cancer, mm -hmm. and uh, they found some stuff inside of me and took care of it, and they said, okay, you know, come back in a, in a year and we'll, you know, make sure you're okay, yada, 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 and as it turns out, as I started doing research, it was like, well, if I change my diet, I probably will reduce my risk. So talk to me about and to the, the listeners about um, the risks that we can minimize by going plant-based with many of the common cancers that, that people nowadays take for granted. 
Yeah, absolutely. Thankfully, there's a lot of research as it relates to nutrition and cancer nowadays. Um, unfortunately, there's a lot of people that still dismiss nutrition having anything to do with cancer. And we actually know that 30% of cancers, um, excuse me, 30% of cancer deaths are actually related to poor nutrition. And that's a huge percentage and which is actually more than smoking. Um, I believe that smoking deaths are 20 to 25% of cancer deaths. So it even makes up a bigger percentage than smoking. And when it comes to cancer diagnoses, only five to 10% are actually genetic related. The rest are li likely lifestyle related, but also environmental exposures. So as an oncology dietitian, I absolutely don't deny that there's so many factors that can go into a cancer diagnosis there's several pieces of the puzzle of our health. It's not just what we eat, but exercise and sleep and stress reduction. Those things are also so important. Um, but obviously, as a dietitian, I'm going to talk mostly about nutrition. And nutrition and a plant-based diet can really truly help reduce the risk for several different types of cancers. First and foremost, right where you mentioned colon cancer, because we want to have a high fiber diet because that can help reduce the risk of uh, polyps, which can become precancerous. And then also prostate and breast cancer both have some really great research when it comes to the plant-based diet. In fact, um, Dr. Dean Ornish and several other physicians that have done work in this area have been able to reverse early stage um, non-aggressive prostate cancer with plant-based diet and a healthy lifestyle, which is pretty much unheard of that we can have cancer reversal um, with diet and lifestyle. So those are just a few of the others, but um, the big ones are definitely colon cancer, breast, and prostate, but there's so many more that become involved too because unfortunately, overweight and obesity is linked to increased risk of several other types of cancer, such as endometrial cancer, mm -hmm. esophageal cancer, pancreatic cancer. The, the list just kind of goes on and on, and we do know that a plant-based diet can help someone achieve a healthier weight more than any other diet for the most part and keep the weight off. That's super important piece of it too. So if we can reduce someone's weight to a healthy weight, we can also reduce the risk of several different types of cancer. Well, you know, there's so much to unpack there with what you just said, because um, with the, the current situation with COVID-19, uh, which we don't see any end in sight right now. I mean, we're, right. you know, we keep saying, okay, we're, we're in the middle or we're near the end or we're at the beginning. We don't know. And mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of underlying causes that create the complications with COVID-19. How much do you focus on helping people to understand that um, by going on a plant-based diet that they can minimize their risk, not just with cancers that, that they would be more susceptible to, but do you actually um, see a link between the complications with COVID and somebody's diet? You know, I... I have always been saying during this whole thing that I am very interested to see the numbers when they're released about the number of people that suffer or die from COVID-19 and the other comorbidities that they have associated, mm -hmm. such mm -hmm. as heart disease, overweight and obesity, diabetes, which are all things that can actually be prevented with a plant-based diet and a healthy lifestyle. Um, so I think there's definitely that relationship there that's really important. From my experience and what I've learned about COVID is that someone that's plant-based doesn't mean that they're invincible from COVID, but that they would, because of their immune system would be so much stronger because of all the phytonutrients that they're able to consume. There's so much better of a chance to be able to fight it off effectively. And thankfully, you know, perhaps never have to be hospitalized um, right. and the symptoms would be much more mild. So I don't think of myself as invincible from COVID-19, um, but I do think that it would drastically reduce someone's risk of contracting it in a dangerous manner, as long, you know, especially considering other comorbidities. So if we're on a plant-based diet, we drastically reduce our risk of these other comorbidities or help manage those comorbidities even better too. Right. And, and I'm glad to hear you say that because actually part of my, my whole mission is raising awareness around around uh, people taking care of their health so that they don't set themselves up for the complications. Mm -hmm. There was an article recently about a 16-year-old kid that um, apparently he was diagnosed in the morning, died in the afternoon, and the headline read, healthy teen uh, succumbs to COVID in 12 hours or something. Mm -hmm. And 
by his picture, you knew he was about 150 pounds overweight. And it's like, wait a minute, you're misleading the public. And mm -hmm. so it's great that there are people like yourself who are educating um, individuals about being plant-based. Now, let's talk about, I, I first of all want to talk about the difference between being vegan and being plant-based. And then I want to talk about how it is to raise a child on a plant-based lifestyle. Yeah, so absolutely. let's start with the difference between vegan and plant-based because vegan, um, you know, people assume that that means people are plant-based and not necessarily, but what is your take on it as a nutritionist? Right. So my take on vegan versus plant-based is that vegan can include highly processed foods and you could be a vegan and eat white pasta and Oreo cookies all day long. And that's considered vegan because there's no animal products associated with that. However, a whole food plant-based diet is going to really take away and minimize those processed foods as much as possible by focusing on the whole plant-based foods. So the fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, and small amounts of nuts and seeds. Where I'll be honest with you, you know, people ask, well, they don't really ask too much anymore because I think they all know, but it's easier for someone in the public to say that they're vegan rather than to say they're plant-based, I mm -hmm. think. And the reason for that is because more people understand that vegan means no animal products. Where at the same time, I do truly believe that someone can be exclusively plant-based or they can just have a plant-centered diet. So meaning they still include small amounts of animal products within it, but they eat 80, 90 percent plants. Right. And I think that could be it could be both ways where a vegan definitely doesn't include any of the animal based products. So like I tell everybody, you could have almost any diet can be done in a healthy manner and almost any diet can be done in a very unhealthy manner, such as a vegan diet. Um, and that's why we really want to focus on the whole food plant based diet where foods are going to be in their most whole food form as much as possible, which isn't necessarily the case in a vegan diet. Okay, excellent. This is Kathleen Gage, and I'm talking with Allison Tierney of Wholesome LLC, and she is a, an oncology uh, nutritionist. She actually is a nutritionist, and her focus is on oncology nutrition. And uh, now you, you um, have a daughter, and how old is your daughter? Three and a half. Three and a half, and she yeah. is plant-based. So she tell is. us uh, what that's like. Yeah, so um, it's it's actually been interesting because she's the first grandchild in the family that is plant-based. So I told my parents when she was really young, when she was still nursing that me and my husband together decided that we would raise her plant-based. And the biggest reason for it was because, you know, I think about the struggles that I had as a kid, acne um, related to the PCOS, which I didn't, was not diagnosed until later into my twenties. Um, trouble trying to have a child, um, unwanted hair growth that's associated with PCOS. And I thought if I can save, potentially save or reduce the risk of my daughter experiencing these same things that I experienced that also caused me to be insecure about my body and so forth, that I was going to do that. And I truly believe in the plant-based diet and uh, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics also has a position statement out there that states that a plant-based vegetarian vegan diet is healthy in all stages of life, including pregnancy and childhood. And so we raise her plant-based and it's been interesting as she's gotten a little bit older because she notices what other people are eating. And... Um, so our biggest focus is that when we're at home, we try to teach her, you know, what plant-based eating is, why we do it, but also for her to recognize that not everybody is going to make this choice and be plant-based because we want people to respect our food choices. So we also want her to teach, we also want to teach her to respect other people's food choices. So I'll give you an example. We were, um, FaceTiming with a friend and she said, Oh, what are you eating? And they were eating eggs. And her response was, she just kind of stared and she said, that's weird because she hadn't encountered that really before. And so I, um, I'm not going to lie, I chuckled a little bit and I don't want to chuckle because I don't want that friend to, you know, have any, like be upset that I might've right. chuckled at that. And I said, you know, Eleni, it's okay. You know, some people just eat things different. And that's okay. We're going to respect that. And so we've been really working on teaching that with her. Um, but so far, she seems to really 
enjoy it. She never has ever seemed to want meat especially. Um, it becomes a little bit harder at the birthday party or whatnot when mm -hmm. there's a cake and it's not necessarily plant-based. Um, but we really try to choose not to sweat the small stuff. And, um, you know, the, our main focus is that we eat plant-based at home and when we're in control of it, but we also know that when she gets older, we're not going to be in complete control of what she's eating. So our, our job, I believe, is just to educate her as best as possible to make the best choices. And when she gets older, just hope that she chooses the, you know, the, the best choice for her body Correct. and as she, you know, for her health. Um, but as we encounter preschool in the fall, I think that'll be a very new step in the challenge of raising a plant-based child in not a plant-based world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, d speaking of educating, um, how would one go about if they, they realize that maybe their health is suffering and they would do better to be on somewhat of a plant-based uh, diet, uh, not necessarily 100% to begin with, because a lot of people, like myself, I went into it 100%. I was dealing with some inflammation as a writer. It was really impeding my writing. And mm -hmm. uh, I did some research, realized that maybe I could minimize it. Within two days, it was gone by going plant-based. Awesome. And uh, I've, not, I've not looked back. I've dropped about 35 pounds. I have more energy. I run on a daily basis, you know, and I'm moving into my late 60s. And it's like, oh my gosh, that shocks me for one thing. It's like, <laughs> how could that have happened? But um, if somebody is uh, really serious about moving into a plant-based diet uh, protocol, what would you recommend that they start with as far as like what books could they read? Uh, obviously, visiting your website, which is, what's your web address? Yep, it's wholesomellc.com. Okay, that's wholesomellc.com. We'll put that in the yeah. show notes. Yeah. Um, and so, what are some books people could read? What would be the, the protocol for cleaning out their kitchen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So I think that, yeah, I think everybody needs to know exactly how they're going to dive into it. And I think it's fantastic, Kathleen, that, you know, you just dived in 100%. And I think other people need to determine, are they going to dive in 100% or are they going to do it in a slow manner? And I think that's really important. That's how I work with a lot of clients and kind of discuss what are your goals? Like, how do you hope to get there and so forth? So if it's somebody who wants to dive in 100%, I truly recommend, you know, going through your fridge, your freezer and your pantry and getting rid of definitely like the cheeses and the animal proteins and stocking your fridge, your pantry, et cetera, with beans and other legumes, whole grains, especially intact whole grains like brown rice, quinoa, farro, bulgur, these really great things that are intact. Um, but from that standpoint, that my biggest recommendation for someone that's going to transition is the first and foremost is to add or at least focus on adding necessarily before you subtract. Um, and I think that works for a large percentage of the population that wants to switch over because sometimes when people think about becoming 100% plant-based, they get a little bit worried about, oh, I'm never going to have cheese again, or I'm never going to have meat again. But instead, if they can focus on including more fruits, more veggies, whole grains, and legumes to their diet, the other stuff starts getting crowded out, and then they get to start experiencing those really positive benefits of having more of those whole plant-based foods in their diet. And I truly believe that's going to motivate them to kick the rest out sooner than later because they're going to notice those positive experiences. For me, for example, with the PCOS and the acne, I noticed how much my, cleanse, my, my skin cleared up just by getting rid of the meat. And it was like one thing. And, and then I started reducing the dairy and it was even more clear. And then mm -hmm. for me, not just getting pregnant, but the acne was a huge motivator to be like, huh, I wonder how clear my skin can be if I get rid of it completely. So that's one of the biggest things that I think for people is because you'll start seeing those awesome benefits and you're just going to be much more inclined to ditch the rest of it. You know, it's interesting because one of the things I didn't realize until after the fact, I used to have bumps on the back of my arms and I, it was just like like acne on the back of my arms. Yeah. And um, I noticed it a lot because when I would work out at the gym, you know, if you scratch yourself and it was like, huh, that's interesting. And I used to get almost daily headaches. I haven't had, I think I've had two headaches in the last two years and both times I was sitting in the dental chair and it's a, my, I tell my dentist, you give me a headache. Uh, <laughs> but the, the back of my arms cleared up and it was like, 
added benefit. Um, mm -hmm. Now, you have a spouse that fully supports what you do on all levels. I think that is mm -hmm. so awesome. He's a keeper. Keep that one. Um, and uh, and that's coming from somebody in a 31-year relationship. So keep your husband. Yeah. Um, but what about people that um, are not supportive of the, the, uh, the whole process where um, one person is going plant-based, but the other people either ridicule them, give them pushback, or just say, oh, go do what you want to do. How do you yeah. address that with your clients? Yeah, so it's really interesting. One of our, when I do discovery calls with a client to kind of see if we're a good fit to work together and what their goals are, I always ask them, what is your support system? Do you have a significant other that's supportive in this process? And if not, who else do you have? Um, and I will be honest, my husband to this day is not 100% plant-based. He is probably like 98% plant-based. Okay. And, but when I asked him to um, dive into this, I said, I don't need you to do it with me, but I would like your support in the process. And for us, that worked really well because it wasn't me telling him that he had to do it. Um, but it was, and I told him, if you still want to have meat or cheese, that's fine, but you have to make it yourself. Um, and I know that can be a very generational type thing too. Where that's the way it is in our house. You good, know, I, good. I'm a hundred percent. My spouse is not and her mother-in-law or her mother, which is my mother-in-law uh, lives on our property and I do all the cooking and well, 90% of the cooking, everything I cook is plant-based. And if they want to have any kind of meat, God bless you. You go to the store and you yep. buy it. I remember the first time I was asked to buy some bacon and I, I was on the cell phone and I'm like, Oh no. No, this isn't <laughs> happening. I said, that's where I draw the line. I am not going to do that. And, yeah. and so I was never asked again. So <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, for him, like I would still buy, I wasn't, I think I was buying meat for him, but I would buy milk for him still. Mm -hmm. And he just stopped asking for it. And I yeah. stopped asking him if he wanted it. And so he slowly just adopted it completely at home. And he was like, nice. I asked him about it once. And I was like, so like, do you like, do you feel better? Like, do you notice a difference? And he's like, I do feel better. And I notice I can keep my weight off because um, he works a lot. So exercise is hard to get in for him. Um, and he's like, I don't think I would be able to manage my weight the way that I am if I wasn't eating this way. Um, and so thankfully I do have that support in that the rest of my family is not plant-based with the exception of my twin sister. And I should probably tell you her story really quickly. Please do. Um, please but do. she was before diagnosed. You do, before yeah. you do, again, I want uh, people to know how they can find you. Your web address oh, sure. is wholesomellc.com. Yep. And when they go there, they can find a five-day, uh, you, you've got a nice giveaway on a five-day start into a plant-based lifestyle. Yeah, it has okay. um, all the recipes, a grocery Excellent. list, um, even tips for prep. So if you want to prep over the weekend and make Monday through Friday easier, we have tips for that as well. I'm going to um, download so, yeah. it myself. You know, even though I know a lot about this and it's my lifestyle, I'm yeah. always looking for new information. So a five-day yeah. protocol is perfect. So, yeah. okay. So tell us about your twin sister. Yeah. So my twin sister was diagnosed with lupus in 2013. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, her doctor told her that they're really wasn't anything she could do for herself other than take the medications. This is something that you'll be on forever. You'll have forever. And your lifestyle and nutrition really doesn't have anything to do with it. Well, as you can imagine, we uh, refused to accept that. And so, of course, I dived into the research, you know, especially as it goes into autoimmune diseases. And she went plant-based shortly after I did. And I said, you know, Lauren, I really think this is something that you should try. It's not going to be harmful. You should just see how it goes. She adopted it. And and um, thankfully, that's another great support system within my family is that when we go to a family events, she's there too, eating plant-based. And um, her disease is in remission. And she went, she dropped her medications from 16 to 1. Wow. And um, she just had a beautiful baby girl, which unfortunately, a lot of people that have lupus are unable to conceive because of the medications that they're on. Mm. Um, so like, it's just so amazing to see all these really great benefits of not, you know, my infertility, her lupus, and then all the cancer patients that I get to work with, it, it's really full circle when it comes to so many other types of chronic diseases. Um, so, but I do believe that a support system is so important, but if your significant other is not supportive, it doesn't mean that they're doing it with you. They can do it with you and not do it with you and still be supportive. Right. Um, 
find support somewhere else. You know, we have a free Facebook group where it's to build a community and support for people because it's not always easy, you know, especially here in Wisconsin. I live in a town in the suburbs of Milwaukee where you can't find vegan food at any of the restaurants. Mm. And so it does get a little bit harder, but if you can find somebody that's a friend, reach out to me, you know, reach out to Facebook, um, reach out to Kathleen and other parts of the community. We'd be here to support you because we know what it's like to not have that support um, in doing it. So if it's not in your family, um, that's unfortunate, but it doesn't mean you won't be successful. It's just finding your way of support somewhere else, whether it be Facebook, um, whether it be maybe finding a support group where you live. Um, We have a plant-based support group here called um, Plant-Based Nutrition of Wisconsin. I know there's other ones that are out there that are very similar for other states. Um, So do a little Google short scene and find other plant-based supports and I'm sure you'll be able to find them. And you can start your own group because I know that for me, when I first started, it was a little bit difficult to find people that uh, were were plant-based. But now I actually go hiking with people who have become plant-based because of watching me. Um, I have uh, a running group that I, I get together with, but there's meetup groups. And if you don't have one, you can certainly start one. And, um, yeah. you know, this is where your own leadership qualities can come out. Um, mm-hmm. And um, so when when you work with your clients, first of all, what's the, the, the type, the ideal type of person to work with you in what you do? And what's the process of you working with them? Sure, absolutely. So uh, the people that I work with, I actually work with people locally in person. Mm -hmm. Everything is virtual right now with COVID, but uh, I do have an office where I get to see people in person, but I also see people virtually all over the country. I have literally people from coast to coast that I get to work with. And how it works is they would apply on my website, fill out a couple of questions. And really what that is for is to make sure uh, that they're ready to work together because um, it's really important that they have made their decision in order to start living a healthier life lifestyle. And it's kind of the idea of, you know, I can bring a horse to water, but I can't make it drink. You know, I can educate as much as I, as much as possible, but someone has to decide that they're ready to make that change because I can't make them make want to change. Um, so then after that, um, I look at the application and we talk a little bit more and then we have a discovery call. And that discovery call is really for me to get to know them a little bit more, learn their goals, and then for them to get to know me too, because I think it's really important for people, um, for personalities to fit and mesh before someone would ever spend money to work with me, because um, I am a private pay. Unfortunately, you know, there's a whole, um, even as a registered dietitian, there's a whole mess when it comes to insurance and reimbursement and all that kind of stuff. So I am private pay, but I want someone to make sure that they're ready for that and that we're a good fit before they would do that. Um, So from there, you know, my one-on-one counseling is very individualized. We start with where someone is, where they want to go, and I just help them um, essentially draw a roadmap in between their start and their finish and help them accomplish different go- whatever their goals may be. Um, and I do tell people, I, you don't have to be pursuing 100% plant-based nutrition to work with me, but I always will promote a plant-centered diet. Uh, but most of the people that come to me anyways, they're not they are looking for a plant-centered right. diet anyways. Um, and so I work with people of varying different types of diseases. I would say that my most popular patient is um, either a cancer diagnosed and they're going through treatment Because as an oncology dietitian, I can help them manage their side effects throughout the course of treatment with different nutrition. So for example, if someone was having bowel issues, we might talk Mm -hmm. about the different foods that they should consume to help manage those bowel symptoms. But also I see a lot of people post treatment and into their survivorship to help them reduce their risk of developing cancer again through nutrition and healthy lifestyle. But I also work with individuals um, with PCOS and infertility, autoimmune diseases, or people that are truly just looking to transition their lifestyle from, let's say, a standard um, you know, omnivorous diet over to a plant-based diet and try to prevent and manage other chronic diseases as well. Yeah. And I I just love it. I've met so many amazing people and just to see all of the positive improvements that they've made and just allow them to live their life because that's what I feel like the plant-based diet has done for me is to fully live life with high energy, not worried about my acne anymore, being able to be a mom, which, you know, we got to a point where we didn't know that if that was going to happen. So being the, you know, I have one client who she lost over a hundred pounds working with me. That's great. 
and she was going through cancer treatment. She lost the weight in a good way. Um, and she rewarded herself with adopting a rescue dog. And she, yeah, and she's like, I wouldn't be able to do this a hundred pounds ago. I wouldn't be able to walk the dog and do the things that I want to do. Um, and she was 73 when she was diagnosed. So it's never too late right. um, to start. And so it's just really cool to see people being able to fully enjoy their life because of the healthy changes that they've made. You know, they have to do the hard work. My job is to guide them to it. Right. Well, and I, I love the story about your client who adopted a dog and got a rescue because we, we do a lot of rescue. We have three horses, we have three chickens, we have a cat, we have two dogs. I, I have property wow. uh, yeah. in Oregon. And um, it, it's such a delight to be able to bring a uh, an abandoned animal into your home and, and give them a, a safe place. So what a great story. And, um, and I, it, what I love is that I can refer people over to you because I, I went through the E. Cornell University plant-based nutrition course, sure. and I did it more for just my own education and to really give me some, if you will, street credibility on yeah. the whole plant-based nutrition. But I'm not a nutritionist. That's not my passion. That's not my mm -hmm. deal. My passion is raising awareness. And I work with a lot of businesses. I'm a business consultant. And mm -hmm. with this whole COVID thing, I've been stripping away of things that are no longer passionate for me. I just don't want to do them. And I'm moving more and more into working solely with plant-based vegan and wellness organizations. Awesome. So I love the fact that I can actually refer people to yourself and, and yeah. uh, this is what you do. This is your expertise. Yeah. So I'm talking with Thanks. Allison Tierney and she is with Wholesome LLC. And Allison... This has been delightful. I love what you're doing. I love the uh, the awareness you're raising for people and the fact that you're helping clients to adopt animals. I mean, I love that one. Um, <laughs> that's a great story. Um, but and you can tell your client that I thought it was one of the best because that's actually you know that's one of my big big passions is making sure animals are taken care of. Awesome. Um, and so. As we, we wrap this up, uh, what are your final thoughts for people as far as um, going into a plant-centered lifestyle and um, what, what they will experience as a result of it? And any yeah. closing thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. The biggest thing that I like to tell people is truly, um, my, one of my favorite quotes is, don't let perfection be the enemy of progress. Mm. And I have so many clients that sometimes they'll say, they'll use the words like, I cheated or um, I didn't do well. And I really want them to focus on the things that they have done well, because if we always focus on that perfection, we've, we're going to let the progress go and never get to where we actually want to be. Um, so focus on really making those small strides because in the end, those small strides are going to be big, giant leaps. Um, so, and with that being said, give yourself some grace as you get started um, because it's not always going to be perfect, but I think as you find that you'll give yourself grace in your nutrition and probably in other parts of your life as well, how much happier and how much more you can love yourself. And I think that's extremely important as well. Um, so take that small step to begin and find support to be able to do it. And um, if I can be that person, I'd love to be able to do it. But anywhere you find it, just get started because the only regret I have about the plant-based diet is that I didn't do it sooner. And I think that's most people's regret too. Um, and I really wish I had been plant-based when I was a college athlete because I really wanted to, I really wish I could have seen um, how maybe that have, would have changed. Right. Right. Well, it's been delightful, Allison, and we'll make sure to put all your contact information in the show notes. And um, I just want to say, keep on doing what you're doing. You're making a difference. And uh, I'm thrilled to have been able to introduce you to my community. This is Kathleen Gage with Plant-Based Eating for Health, wishing you a healthy, vibrant, and nutritious life. Thank you for your commitment to an ethical life through plant-based food choices. The kind of choices that are kind to your body the environment, and most of all, animals. Be sure to leave, sure to leave a review and rating of the Plant-Based Eating for Health podcast show.